Hello YouTube, and welcome to a new Unity 3D Space tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to begin actually loading our game, but we're going to make some slight adjustments to the saving one. So last tutorial we made it, so when you click play and then you press escape, it pauses the game. Well, basically, it's not fully, fully paused yet. Um, and then when you, well, you pause. click save, click save, it saves. So if we go into our C games and then YouTube game, save games, username, you get a save, but then people can click, wait a second, click, wait a second, click, wait a second, click, and it'll create a save for every single one, which is kind of a lot, it will take up a lot of room. Well, obviously they won't yet because they're like a kilobyte, that's nothing, but imagine if each of these, well, imagine if you had a thousand of these and a normal user's not going to keep checking, are they? So, eventually we'll add the feature for them to make new saves for themselves, but for now, we're going to just make one save and we're going to make it overwrite itself. And that does mean we have to get rid of the time aspect. But, what I've thought is a good alternative is we stick the time saved inside it. So if the user ever goes into mod it or whatever, you can see the last time they saved. So it helps a lot. So if we go to our GUI scripts and we'll find on-screen actions here. What we'll do is we'll scroll down to the bit where it actually creates the save. So, where is it? So here, we create the save file and we give it the path, so where we save it, and then we give it the name of it, which is good, it works, but we're going to get rid of it. And I'm only going to make a slight change. So we're going to keep the slash on the end, because we need to put it next to it. And just put that there so we know what we're doing. In fact, we don't need all that. Here, we just I'm simply going to go and get the user's name. So the player.attributes.char name. But then again, if we've already saved that inside it, inside of a thing here, Dragoon, we don't really need that either. So we're just going to call it savegame.ytt. Because ytt is an awesome name. And then we finish it up. So there's our save game, pretty much. So we save it, it'll save as that one. But now we do need to make it check whether it's actually created that. And if it has created it, it needs to load it then right to it. So, we're going to begin with the loading, and it's actually still really simple. So what we're going to do is actually check if it's already there. So we've checked if the directory is there, but we need to check if this file exists. So, we haven't actually done that yet, even though I thought we did. But it's really, really simple. It's exactly like this kind, well, kind of. Here, we're simply going to type if, and then we put what we want. So, file again, and then we put dot exists. So if it exists... But we don't want. We want to check if it doesn't exist to create it. So if it doesn't exist, um, then we need to put what file. So it's path plus uh, that bit. So if that doesn't exist, then create it. Simple enough. But make sure you put your brackets on because there's two things we've got to do. So it's going to create it there. But then, well, because that's in an if statement, we can't access it here. So you can either put it up the top as a shared writer I think it is we look at that later or in here you can simply type create text dot close just like we do down here and then we're going to reload it so it's only a small text file so it doesn't really matter but if you're loading up millions of lines then you kind of want to find another way around it so now we have to load the file really really simple again so we're going to type var loaded file and we will have to write an if statement to determine whether it loads it or creates it. In fact, we don't need to. No, leave it. Forget that. Because it creates the directory there if it doesn't exist. So that's created. So it doesn't matter what it does after. Then it, if the file exists, then it already exists. It just loads it. Otherwise, it will create it, then load it. So it works either way. So loaded file equals stream writer. And what stream writer and stream reader do is basically I up here you wrote I, system IO. This includes everything, like I said, the list of commands, file, directory. It also includes something called stream writer and stream um, reader. Stream reader loads the file. Stream writer will load a file and allow you to write to it. They're two different things, but very common. Like on this one, you can't read lines with it. But on stream reader, you can. So you have to make sure you code it right there. But then stream and then we put bracket and we put what we want it to load, which is that. 
you'll see a lot of it just relates to path loading. So that'll come in and set, well we can't actually do that, we can't actually set stream writers, so just put new, so it creates a new type, like a new instance of it, like creating a prefab. You can't edit the default prefab, but you can create, copy it and then edit it. So it'll load it, but then we need to, to write a line there, there and close it. So that should work fine. And what I was thinking for the time is, like I said earlier, let's load it in. So, of course, I deleted everything we wrote, so we have to write it again. So, here we'll just type, well, put that back. We'll say, save details. I want this at the top. Save details, and we'll say, time saved. And here, we simply type the time. So, I'm going to type time dot now dot and let's think so we're going to go hours, minutes, seconds, so it'll be hour plus colon because that's how time's usually played out, plus time dot now dot, and then we'll copy this to say writing it again. Time dot now dot minute plus colon plus time dot minute dot now second. And that should work fine for that. So then we can duplicate it and we can put date saved. So we need the year, no wait, day, month, capital S, hour, wait no that's not right, year, yes there we go, so now we can save it and hopefully we won't get no errors, so we're going to go in and I'm going to click save and then it should overwrite our previous save there, so we can go to all these and it should overwrite it, game paused, save, and we go and have a look, save game.ytt, we take it up. So it saved it. Uh, remember the time, 11.39.19. 11.39.19. Click save again. It, we didn't delete it. So we go up, 11.13. Yeah, it changed, basically. I forgot it, but it did change. So we are overwriting it now. Perfect. So what's left now is to begin reading it. And now reading it and saving it are the longest things you are ever going to see. So, easiest way to save something is you can actually save it within one right line if you do it right. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom here and we'll type function save data or data if you're in America. And above here we're going to simply type var data slash data and it'll be a string variable. Just like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take every time we write to a line here and we're going to copy it. Copy, yeah. And down here we'll paste it again. Uh, line it up, make it look nice. There. So instead of saying load of file dot right line, we're simply going to put data plus equals that. And by putting plus equals, it means that next time you put it on, it'll add to what's already there. So at the moment, equals nothing. So plus equals will just add it to nothing. Nothing plus nothing is, well, nothing plus that is just that. But then we can copy it again, and we can paste it in here. So this will add it to the end of that. And that's all we're going to keep doing, is adding it onto the end of that one. So it'll all work fine, work the same. And then, you might be thinking, well, we, how do we get data from there up to there? So just like we did the item inventory icons, if you remember, we created a function that returns it. Well, this is kind of our return function, but also a bit different. So we're going to delete all these right lines but one, and we're just going to paste this in. So save data bracket bracket. So it's going to come down and read this function, but then it won't do anything. So we're going to come down to the bottom and type return data. So it'll return a string. So you call this function, it'll read it, return data. So basically you're calling a string. That's all it's going to do. So here you just add every single bit of your save things. You can space it out if you like, do whatever. I have a very, very, very long one for Lost Maps. But yeah, so it'll come up and then it'll write that one line to it. And it'll do the exact same thing. I don't need to test it because I know it's true. So now that we've saved it, you can see it adds these certain details. We need to copy this or duplicate it. And we'll type load data. So this is the long one, but I actually found a way to make it kind of the same, but it still takes time. So now, you know you can't edit the time and date that your game's been saved, because that's actually editing the computer's time, that's not what you don't need. So we're going to get rid of it, like so. And we don't need the data string as well, we don't need that either. And we don't need the return function. So 
We don't need to play details, it doesn't do anything. But we do need to set the character's name. So I know they'll already have the same name, but we do need to actually tell them, basically, if you're one character and you load it, it gives you the other character. So at the moment, we've only got one thing we can actually load, name. So we're going to type player attributes here. And this is where we actually need to go in and set it to whatever. So it's really, really easy. So if we've saved it, I need to open it like that. So basically, we need to get this line here, take out character name equals, and then get whatever's left on every single one. So anything you put after here, it will save it as it. So we actually need to make it load first. So I'm going to create a loading button because that seems the easiest way to start. So where are you? Hello. Save game. So we'll duplicate it and we'll get rid of. We'll leave stuff in it for now because we do need it. And we'll type load game. So we'll find our buttons above it. So 930 will say 900. 930. Wait, that's not working. Try this one then. 570. Oh dear. And then we'll set this. Well, 560 then. We'll set this to 600. This can be 640. So that should bump them all up. Yes, that should work. So in here we've got load game. Just one here. Perfect. Uh, just put a couple of things there so we know where we're looking. So we do need the path to begin loading. We know that. That's right. So what we're going to do is pretty much copy all of this bit in here. Just cut it because I, I can't remember if we need it later. Like, I'll do it as we go down. And we're going to type here load data just to call our function. So as soon as you click that button, it calls it straight away. Unlike this one which creates it. Creator, reader. Yeah. So it'll come down, skip that, and it'll come to here. So we can paste this in. So before we actually start setting details, we need to get them. So we need to set the path. That's correct because it needs to know where it's loading. So it does need to check if the file exists. So we don't need the directory because it'll just check from the file. So if that file doesn't exist, but then that, that means we haven't saved. So we put if file does exist, then we can copy all this out and we can put this back in here. Just like that. So if the file exists, perfect. So this stream writer here and load data and everything, the close we put all the way at the bottom. So loaded data. We just rename them so they don't go anywhere else. Yes. So loaded data equal. Then we need to open it. So this allows us to write to it but not read it. So we need to set what we're doing. So file. So loaded data equals file dot. And then remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to open a file. What file are we trying to open? A text file. So open text. Capital O, capital T. That's simple. So that'll open it, but it won't read it yet. So we've now opened the file and we've basically said, right, we've given you access to it. It knows what it's looking at. So imagine opening a book. You open it, but you're not reading any lines. We need to tell you to begin reading the line. So obviously, I don't know if it's different in any country or anything, so I can't say, but it'll read it like normal people do, I, th I think. Where it's from the top to the bottom, and it'll just read down like that it's computers you know where it does like code but anyway we're going to get rid of this line here because we don't need to write to it anymore and we're simply going to type var um, read data equals loaded data dot read line and it will only read one by one line so at the moment we've all we've called that well we haven't called this so well yeah we've called it once so it's only going to read the top top line so it'll read save details that's it so we need to tell it to read multiple lines. So this is a new type of loop, which I've not actually discussed because I haven't really found any point for it. So just like you get a for loop and you set the limit of it. So we've often used it for var blah 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 dot length of an array. But you can't really, well I, I'm not sure, don't forget semicolon, that you can get the length of a document. And plus if you did it, it'd be a very large array, very processor heavy. So we're going to use something called a while loop and all it does is while something do something or while something is not true do something so basically while the player is not dead well they're living um if the player's life well while the player's life is more than zero um print hello else kill kind of thing so we're going to do it here but it's really really simple just like an if statement while just lowercase while bracket and then we put what we want so we put read data 
And read data is going to re be returning a string value. No matter what you put in, numbers, letters, anything, string value all the time. So while read data, so while this string does not equal null, pretty much. So if it equals null, it means it's reading these lines here. So then it'll just skip it. So there, but by using this read while, well this while one, it'll read one line and then that's it. So we need to tell it to read again. And don't forget it's like an if statement, so you need your brackets. So enclose all this in it. Except the close. That's add it. So this while bit will we re read the one string. So what I'm basically trying to get at, which I'm not doing very well, is we need to tell it to go down the lines. So at the moment this reads one line, but then we need to tell it to read another line. And it's really, really simple again. So we're going to copy this entire thing here, except the var, and just paste it here. That simple. So it'll read it while the line, and it'll ba we're basically going to say in here, if the line blah 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 equals character name, then set it, else do this, 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 this. So it's a long, long if statement, but you need it. And then when it gets to the bottom of it, it means it's activated its action, read another line, so it skips another line. So somewhere in here there's probably an integer saying which line it's on and it's going to tick 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 tick. So once it, this while's function's ended, it means it's actually read everything in the document, read the whole document. So on our save game it's gone past 11, there's nothing else there. Then it'll close it and then we've loaded data. Really simple. So we're going to look at our save game. So we'll just look at the character name. Now we somehow need to get everything after the equals sign. So after the equals, after the equals, after the equals. We somehow need to get it. So why not, well, try to think the best way to do it. The one thing I used was string.split. So we return a string, we split it at the equals sign, or whatever sign splits it up, and then we get it. And the reason I used the equals sign is, well, how many other times are you going to use an equals sign? You can't have it in your name, unless you're a dragon, then in that case you might need to change it. Or you can't have it in an integer value, can't have it as a boolean. So it works perfect. So string dot split at equals, this will be number zero, this will be number one. So we just make everything equal number one. And it works really well. So we're going to do that. Yes. So it needs to be in the while loop, otherwise it will read one line only. So every time it creates a new line, it needs to run this code. And trust me, I've loaded so much and it's so quick at doing it, it's amazing. It's none of the loading screens. I'll show you how to put the loading screens in just in case in the future. But I made it load levels and positions and it was just instant really. So yeah. So here we're gonna type var get data I don't know why. Equals read data dot to string and this will make sure it is definitely, definitely a string value, otherwise I know it should do, but sometimes I don't know, some of might go wrong, but just put it anyway. It won't hurt. And we'll put dot split in a bracket in here. What do we want to split it at? Equals where do you want to start? Zero. And then that's simple. So we can put below this if get data zero equals and what's it going to equal? Character name. Without the equals, can't have equals. If it equals character name, then we're going to use our if statement and we would usually put it here. But then I did say to you, I found a way to lessen the lines. You put it on top. Well, not on top, but here. So we'll say player attributes dot character name equals get data one, and make sure you convert it back to a string. Just save it. So um, I'm, I'll try and do some in a minute where you do, use floats, booleans, and everything, because then I can show you how to convert them. It's genius how you convert them. It's so easy. But yeah. So we don't need this line anymore. So we've successfully finally loaded our user data. So as this grows, and um, this will grow, trust me if you load it right, this will grow too, quite a lot. I want to say they'll be the same, but they won't be the same. But as you can see, it, the get data, so actually loading it, relies on this. And this actually relies on this, and this relies on that, and that. So you can't really call it in different functions unless you're passing them through parameters, and you don't really want to do that. Well, you can, but it's a bit more, well, it's not needed, basically. So we've got that, we've got to test it. So I'm going to play the game, and I'm going to save it, and then change our name, hopefully. So 
I realised player attributes is a static variable, we can't change it, so let's make it so we can change it. So up in function update, do we have it? Yes. Here, yeah. we'll type if import.get key down uh, t, no wait, I'll use that, um, m, I don't use that. Then player attributes.char name equals YouTube. So when we press m, it will change the name for us. So we can go in and save it, it'll work. Then we press it and it should change it for us. But I've just realised. Back in a minute. So this is not mandatory, but I've just added it just to make sure we can test that it works. Basically, when you press M, it'll set the name, and when you press N, it'll print the name. So we can save it as Dragonborn or whatever it was. I can't remember. Dragonov was it? Dragonoon. Dragoon. But anyway, press M. It'll change it. We save it. Press N, and it'll load it for us and tell us where it is. Not mandatory, but it's just an if statement with print statement in it. We kind of need it to test it though, until we get the entity starts up and running. So we can run. Game pause. Click save. So we go back up here, save game. We'll drag it, put it up here, put it in here. Oh wait, just reload it then. Right, so, oh look, I told you it didn't do it. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, so it's loaded it. Perfect. So. Let's go on and press N. Was it N? I Game forgot. pause. Don't press the wrong key. M. It should be N first. So press M. And it's renamed it. Get a second. Game pause. Click save again. So it's just overwrite of that. Go back in. And load this one again. And it's not changed it at all. So it turns out I pressed N. Silly me press M, control, well not control M, so we just press M and it's just saved game it, pause. so we save it again, go back, save game, drag it up, load. So you may now take away my cookie or spam me down below, I was making the stupidest mistake, you probably always sat there, well that's obvious, it saves it into separate usernames, it was working fine. Anyway, so YouTube, it saves it as its actual username. Save game, we drag it up, put it in, boom. So it saved it, perfect. But we actually need to make it load it. So to load it, we're going to turn it off and put it back on. So now our name should be Dragonov, we know that. So if we game save, paused. it's Dragonborn, we know that. Dragonoon, ah. But if I load it, and we just press N, you can see that it worked, kind of. It's loading the one we are already. So, ah, this isn't working very well. Basically, we need to set a, so you type in your username to load, or we do something else for now. But not yet, we can't do it yet because this tutorial is going to be a bit long. And I just looked at the time too, it's getting very long. But it does work. So if you add some more variables in here, so to, where is it here? Add your position, add add a position to it, that would work really well because then you could test it and then all you do here is convert it to a float or an int or something then it will load it next tutorial we'll look at loading different types sorry this tutorial has been quite long, I didn't think it would be this long but thank you for watching, please join my Facebook group please hit the like button if you liked it, if not you feel free to hit the dislike button but please tell me why you don't like it